I have been waiting for someone to do this for a long time. A true trekking pole chair designed to help you save pack weight by using your trekking poles as part of the frame. Why haven't we done this yet? Oh, maybe that's why. Look, chairs are pretty controversial, and there are a lot of people who think chairs simply aren't worth the wait. Probably the same people who think backpacking is supposed to be uncomfortable because you're roughing it or some ridiculous nonsense. I, on the other hand, am a big proponent of the chair. I think the weight is worth the comfort that you get, especially after a long day on the trail. To an extent, a lot of chairs on the market are just too heavy, and if it wasn't for the relative lightweight of my Helinox Chair Zero, I might not take one at all. Which is why I've been wondering, why hasn't anyone tried to make a trekking pole chair yet? So I was excited to get to try the new Get Out Gear Trek Chair. This chair was launched on Kickstarter sometime last year, and ever since I've been casually waiting for it to come to market. It uses the same idea as trekking pole tents, that if you are already carrying trekking poles, why not use that in the design of other gear so that you are ultimately carrying less weight? There is no sense in carrying twice as many poles when you can use one set to do twice as many things. But that is the first problem we come to with the trek chair. If you are already carrying a trekking pole tent, your chair is now going to be competing against your tent for resources at camp. You can't use the trek chair and a trekking pole tent at the same time. Now, there are ways around this. For instance, it is possible to set up your tent, get it all staked out and pitched properly, and then simply remove the poles to use with your chair. Your tent's going to collapse, but it's easy enough to just replace them after you're done using the chair. Your tent will be mostly set up, and it won't take that long to put the poles back. This method will work most of the time, and if you don't mind doing it, it's not a bad system. But on a very recent trip, I found myself hesitant to bring the Trek chair because I was expecting some snow to be on the ground, and I wanted my chair handy to keep gear off the ground, and I didn't want my tent to be collapsed on the ground either, especially while snow was falling. So I ultimately decided I had to choose one over the other. So I just took a different chair. But most people don't have the luxury of owning more than one chair and probably don't want to put themselves in the position of having to choose one piece of gear over another. That said, the whole idea here is to save weight and unfortunately the Trek chair doesn't really save any weight. For the chair alone, without the trekking poles, weighs one and a half pounds on my home scale. The trekking poles, which you're probably going to be carrying anyways, weigh an additional pound. This is a half a pound heavier than my preferred Helinox Chair Zero that weighs right at a pound with no trekking poles needed. Now, that's an unfair comparison because the Trek Chair is a high back chair. And so, to even the playing field a little bit, Get Out Gear sent me a brand new Helinox Chair Zero high back along with the Trek Chair for comparison. Now, from a weight perspective alone, the Helinox high back edges out the Trek chair just a hair. The Helinox is 1.49 pounds compared to the Trek chair's 1.51 pounds on my home scale. But it's important to note that the Helinox high back also doesn't need trekking poles and yet still manages to weigh less than the Trek chair. But weight isn't everything and I did find the Trek chair more comfortable than the Helinox high back for several reasons. One, because the Trek chair is actually high enough that you can rest your head on the back where the Helinox isn't quite high enough. Two, the Trek Chair's cross pole runs from front to back instead of side to side like the Helinox. This front to back design allows for more space for your butt to fit without feeling like you're sitting in a bucket. That combined with the adjustable nature of the trekking poles means that you can adjust the Trek Chair from a more reclined position to a more upright position based on how you want to sit. The Helinox only has one position that just isn't as comfortable as the Trek chair. But the biggest deal breaker here is the construction. I've had my Trek chair since early October, but just haven't had the opportunity to put out content until now. During that time, I happened to see Doug's video over a Backcountry Pilgrim where he had the Trek chair break on him. He then later posted a pic from another review where they also had the chair break. As soon as I saw this, I knew that I needed to test my chair as thoroughly as I could. I started off easy with just some light tipping from side to side, and then I moved to tipping the chair from front to back, which I do all the time in my Helinox Chair Zero without ever giving it a second thought. I knew eventually I would have to sit forcefully into the chair just to make sure that it wouldn't break, but before I could even get there, the chair broke while leaning back on two legs. This is really unfortunate, and I feel bad, especially for small companies like this, because I know that they're simply trying to bring new ideas to market the best they can, and in some cases have hundreds of thousands of dollars invested into these items. But unfortunately, this is not an unrealistic situation. It's far too easy, especially on uneven ground, to sit down and tilt the chair back or accidentally tip it over backwards. If this happens, this is a $200 chair that is no good anymore. And to be fair, I decided I needed to subject the 
helinox with the same forces to see if it could hold up. I tilted it side to side, backwards and forward, and even threw myself into the chair, and the helinox took it all. So, even though I think the Trek chair is an overdue concept that needed to be brought to market, this one isn't ready yet. Okay, so I reached out to and just heard back from Get Out Gear. They are standing behind their product with a five-year hassle-free warranty. They are investigating what's going on. They've asked me to send back my chair to try to figure out why that front hub broke. They believe, they're hoping, that this is limited to an advanced run of chairs that was sent out to creators and that it's not going to affect the mass majority of chairs that they've already sent out, which, in the big scheme of things, is not that many. About 1,100 chairs have already been sent out. But if you've already got a chair or you're thinking about buying a chair, they're trying to fix the problem, and if you have a problem the way that I have and some other creators have had, you can be pretty sure that they are going to take care of that and send you another chair, hopefully after whatever problem that they're having gets fixed. In the meantime, I'm still in love with my Helinox Chair Zero. I think it is 100% worth it, like I talk about in this video right here. If you're a fan of backpacking chairs, you might check out some of my Take a Seat shirts. You can find those at mylifeoutdoors.com store or through the links in the description. Like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching. The Trek chair, Trek, Trek chair, Trek chair. It's very difficult to say.